Thank you. Would you please remain standing for the reading of the scripture, which in your pew Bibles is in pay, on page 1649, John chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. Hear the word of God. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised by my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. So driving out here this morning, just about to get on Interstate 70, and I said, Lord, I'm not ready for this. And he said to me, when are you ever? And that is so true. Nothing we do, well, we can do a lot without God, but if we really want to do something, we need to let God work in us. So I was so glad to hear those words in my mind this morning, it just remind me that he's working. So we read, a very familiar passage to many. Um, even more familiar if we'd have kept reading to verse 16. We, I think most of us know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But prior to that is what we read this morning. This man named Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night and he's saying, we know you're from God. I mean, we see the miracles. You've proven your point. You've got your message out. And what's Jesus say? He doesn't say thank you. He goes, yeah, I'm glad my message got out. No, he just completely, in a sense, ignores what Nicodemus said. He goes, you must be born again. Just drive that point home. You must be born again. And Nicodemus is like, what's, what do you mean? Like, how is that even possible? But then he goes on to say, flesh gives birth to flesh. We are all born. Every single one of us has been born. I think we can all agree to that, right? We wouldn't be here if we had not been born through our mother's flesh, okay? But Jesus is telling us we need to be born again. And I know many of you are probably saying, hey, I know this. I know this, and I forgot something. I gotta get it. But as I often tell people, Think of your favorite food. You don't eat it just once. You have it several times. So sometimes it's okay to hear something that you already know, just like eating your favorite food again. It nourishes your body. So hearing this message nourishes our spiritual bodies, and hopefully you'll get something more out of it today. But to be born again is to come to the Lord and say, I believe, I confess my sins, I want to be part of your kingdom. You don't have to use those words. However, the Lord leads you to say it. As long as you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, and you call upon the name of the Lord, then you shall be saved. And that means you're born again. That happens one time. One time you're born again. But it doesn't mean that you should never think about it again. You should just say, okay, I'm born again. I'm going to go do whatever I want because I'm sealed, I'm protected. That's not what it means. That is step one, being born again. What is step two? I'm going to turn to Mark for step two. It's also in Matthew 16, but in Mark chapter 8, beginning with verse 31, we can read, He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed after three days, rise again. Okay? 
He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Whoa, did you hear that? He took Jesus aside and rebuked the Lord. I'm thinking, Peter, do you not know who you're talking about here? <laughs> I, I don't know if I would have done that. But then Jesus turned and looked at his disciples. He rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, if anyone would come after me or be born again, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. So is Jesus saying, we must just die and then we can go to heaven? No. He wants us to live this life that we have, but he wants us to die to the flesh that was born of flesh and cannot get into the kingdom of God. When we die to the flesh, that's step two. So we come to the Lord at some point in our lives and we say, Lord, I believe this. I confess I did things that I don't even remember, all the things I did. Or maybe we can remember and we confess them all to God because he knows. And then the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you are saved. But then you're born again. But then step two is take up your cross and follow him. Does that mean we got to go find a cross and just walk along the road everywhere we go and listen to people wonder why we're carrying a cross? I saw a video once, it's kind of funny, a guy is walking down the road, carrying a cross, I think he was walking along, might have been the interstate, it was definitely a busy highway, and he's walking along, <laughs> you get to the, they pan down to the bottom, he's got a wheel on the bottom of the cross, which I thought was ingenious, as it made it easier to, to pull it along, but of course the comments on the video were like, Jesus never had a wheel on his cross, that's not the point. And the point is that we don't all take up a cross and walk down the road. I mean, if you do that, great. I know that people do that. There are crosswalks, and they happen uh, at uh, Easter time. People do that. And it's, it's a fantastic thing. But he's not saying pick up a cross, or even a little one you put in your pocket. What he's saying is every day I want you to die to yourself. I want you to ask for the things that God wants for you. Put him first and you second, what's going to happen in your life? You're going to change. The closer we get in a relationship with God, the more we change. I tried to talk about this a little bit last week when I talked about how we use his love to help us grow, and his love is unconditional and such. This is kind of like part two of that message from last week. It's about a relationship with him. What do I mean? I had somebody ask me a couple weeks ago, all right, you keep saying this relationship thing, but how do you do that? What do I do? And you know what I told him? Ask God. Oh, I am asking God. I said, well, then listen to God. Because that's not just asking, you've got to listen to. He goes, well, how do I know if I'm... We went into various ways that you can hear from God. You can hear him by like getting on the road and you hear a voice in your head say, are you ever ready? You can hear him by, you ask a question, God, what does this mean? Turn on the radio and all of a sudden there's a song on the radio explaining what you just asked about. That's God. You can be walking down the road, see a sign, and just read the words. That's God. Right, Jim? <laughs> there's all kinds of ways you can hear from God. But what you've got to do to give up yourself because there's a problem here. We're going to get to that in a second, but we got to give up ourselves because if we don't, we're going to hear from ourselves. We're not going to hear from God. God is not going to force himself upon you. When he spoke to Nicodemus, he didn't get down on his knees and say, Nicodemus, please listen to me. You got to understand this. You got to be born again. No, he didn't do that. He simply said, you must be born again. And then he explained to him, flesh gives birth to flesh, spirit gives birth to the spirit, 
You should know. You're a Pharisee. You should know that I'm the one. You just said it. You know I am. So he walked him through it, casually walked him through it, and helped him understand what it meant to be born again. That's the first step. But the problem comes that in our human lives, we have all these things that are coming against us. First of all, there are spirits all around us that we don't see. And I know some of you may be saying, oh, here he goes again. Yeah, because it's true. And I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. There is spiritual warfare going on around us all the time. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 6 tells us to put on the armor of God. Ian did a whole series on the armor of God because of the spiritual warfare going on around us. That's one thing. Then we got this flesh. Flesh gives birth to flesh. We're born into it. We live with it. And in this mind of ours, we want to do things that we want to do. We want to understand what we want to understand. We want to believe what we want to believe. And sometimes we take that unicorn and turn it upside down and don't know what we're looking at. That was perfect, Brindley. Thank you very much for bringing that in today. It goes right along with the sermon. It was perfect because I thought you made pancakes with it, was my first thought. I tell you, if I'd have started making pancakes and put it on the girl, Brindley was like, no, you put water and you pop them. We don't know because we are so limited in our minds. We need to get rid of this. We need to get rid of the humanness of us and say, God, I give it all to you. I lay it out before you. I die to self so that you can increase in me. And he won't force you to do it. No one can do it for you. You have to do it yourself. And you can. Don't tell me that I've tried and I can't do it and I've Okay, you know how many times I failed? 51 years old, I can't count that high how many times I've failed in trying to get closer to God. But every day I try more. And guess what? It's working. It's working. I got a long way to go, but it's all do it. And don't say, no, you're a pastor. Of course you can. No, I wasn't a pastor back in 1998. And even the first part of 1999, and even when I became a pastor, it just had a title. I wasn't really what you would think of as a pastor for a time. It took time to learn, to get rid of the flesh, to get this thing up here, battling all that's out there, keeping it out of my mind, plus battling this flesh that I live in. I had to surrender and submit to the Lord. Daily surrender and submit. How do I do that? Sure, I can talk a big talk, but how do you do it? Well, the, when I didn't say to this guy I was talking to a couple weeks ago, I said, talk to God. I didn't use the P word. I didn't say prayer. I said, talk to God. But that's what it is. It's prayer. And I don't mean, down on your, I'm not going to get on my knees because I won't get up. I don't mean get down on your hands and knees. If you want, fine but you don't have to. I don't mean say in specific words. If you want to, fine. But we're, part of our problem is, part of what this enemy around us has done is they've taught us, well, you got to do it this way. And if you don't do it, then God's not listening. If you don't say Elohim, God's not listening. I, I didn't even know what that word was until you said it to me. I told that guy that told me, if you don't say your prayers in the name of Elohim, he's not listening. That was the first time I ever heard Elohim. How am I supposed to God not listen to me all those years before? No, that's not true. That's religion. These spirits around us are trying to get us involved in it. They want us into religion. Because you know what religion is? Religion is man's attempt to reach God. And man can't reach God. We tried it in the Tower of Babel. And God knocked it down. God's success in reaching us is Jesus Christ. When we go to Jesus Christ, we get access to God. We are speaking directly to God. Now tell me, that doesn't blow your mind. I mean, he created everything. And we're talking to him directly? Yeah. And if you're on your knees, praise God. If you're standing up, praise God. If you're sitting right where you are right now praying, praise God. He's hearing it. 
I don't care how you do it. But when you do, tell him, I want to surrender to you. I want to submit to you. I want to grow. I want to understand you. If you want to know how I got to be where I am today, it was by doing what I just said. That's my secret. That's it. Just telling God what I wanted. Because he wanted it for me. I didn't know at the time, but he wanted it for me. And I just, he was leading me. And I know he's leading all of you. And he's asking you. And some of you do this. Some of you are sitting there thinking, I don't know about this. Well, ask God. Don't ask me. Ask God. What's Phil talking about? What can I do? He will lead you. And don't expect overnight results. It does happen, but it doesn't happen to everybody. It takes time. But as Pastor Ian says, embrace your process. It is a process. Embrace it. It is a journey. Enjoy it. Because as we step out, we surrender. Start to think back six months ago. You know, I might have acted differently six months ago if that situation would have happened today. You know what happened right after I said to God, I'm not ready? I'm not, I can't make this stuff up. I'm pulling out in St. Clairsville. I'm pulling on to Interstate 70 off of Route 9, okay? Coming up the ramp, and I said, I'm not ready for this. And God says, are you ever? I'm like, oh, okay, yes, that's, that's very true, thank you. I pull out, semi cuts me off as I'm coming into the lane, just about took the front off my truck. And you know what I did? I, I honked the horn, of course I did. But, no, but I didn't do the things I would have done years ago. I'd have got right up on his tail, I'd have flashed my lights at him, I'd have cut him off, I probably would have been swearing at him. I didn't do any of that. Honked the horn because it scared me, and I went, you have really brought me a long way. He can do it for you too. Okay, don't use my example because I shouldn't even have honked the horn, but <laughs> that was a bad example. But what I'm showing you is that we can change. We do not have to accept who we are today. And if, if you're saying, I'm really close to God, then don't accept that because you can be closer. You can be closer. Don't accept it every single day. Try more to get closer to God. Take up your cross and follow him. Now, I told you about the guy with the wheel on the cross. He said the most amazing thing. I loved it. His reply to that guy who said, Jesus didn't have a wheel on his cross. And you know what he said? Jesus didn't care what his critics said about him either. Jesus did not care what his critics said about him. That hit me. As one who sometimes will take criticism the wrong way and get offended by it, I don't anymore. That was about six months ago. I saw that. But that made an impact on me because it, hopefully it'll make an impact on you. We don't, if we are living our lives for what other people say, we're living it for the wrong reason. Take up your cross and follow him. Living for the Lord every day. I don't care what people say about you. My family's getting a little bit sick of me because I'm constantly talking about the Lord now. They'll catch on. They'll catch on. But and, and I've got, I'm trying not to over, be overbearing and beat them over the head with the Bible, but what I'm saying is I don't care anymore what they say. I don't care what they say. I care, but I, I don't let it bother me. Let's put it that way, okay? Daily surrender is step two. And step three, the final step, I mean, we can could, we could make 12, 15, 20 steps, but the final step is enjoy everything God has given you. If, he, if life throws you a curveball, and I'm telling you, this enemy around us, they are going to try to knock you down. They're going to bring on sickness. They're going to make somebody else sick. They're going to break your car down. They're going to do all kinds of things. And I'm not saying they're the reason for everything that happens in our lives. That's, that's not the case. There is still this thing called life that we live in, this environment we live in that causes problems too. It's a broken world. But all this put together, it's going to bring you down, okay? But God can lift you up. God can lift you back up. 
don't try. I, I, I cringe every time I hear, pull yourself up by the bootstraps. No, God, get a hold of my bootstraps and pull them up for me because here we go. I mean, I'll, I'll do the physical part, but by golly, Lord, you do the spiritual part because I can't do it or I'll fail. Embrace your process. God knows what he's doing. Enjoy the life he's given you. Just to recap, step one, be born again. Come to him and say, I confess to you, I believe and I need you. I cannot get to heaven without you. I need you. That's step one. Step two, Daily, surrender your life to God. Give it to Him. Prayer, read the Bible, fellowship with other Christians. There are many ways you can do it. Seek a stronger relationship with Him. Because when you seek it, you will find it, and you will go on to step three to enjoy everything that God has given you, the good and the bad. The book of James tells us to, to be joyful when things come against us. That doesn't sound right, does it? Be joyful when things come against us. That man knew what he was talking about. Because in all things, if we find joy in the Lord, we can. So this card that's in the bulletin, it just simply says again. You know why? Because I want you to take this and put it somewhere where you'll see it every day. And I'm not saying be born again every day. I'm saying surrender again every day. So when you see that, remember, I need to surrender this day to the Lord. Put it somewhere where you'll see it every day and know that I need to surrender to the Lord again. A daily thing. I promise you, I'll give you a money back guarantee. And you guys haven't given me any money, so we're good. You will, you will change if you daily surrender to the Lord. And then you will easily move on to step three and enjoy what God has given you. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for these steps, Lord, to come to you, to be born again, to surrender daily, and to enjoy all that you've given us. Father, you're beyond words. We can't even begin to tell how wonderful and mighty you are. You're beyond our comprehension. But Lord, we pray that as we grow closer to you, that you'll teach us more and more about your character, who you are, and how we can change, and then just make that change in us, shed this flesh, and give us the spirit of life that we may live each day in fullness of that life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.